for the first time in Asia. Connect your land phone and smartphone through SLT Wi-Fi with the SLT Voice app. Clean. Ex Governor Azad Sali passes the ball to the brother of Minister Abdul Halim over the rise of national Tawhid Jamaat. Pompeo eyes Sri Lanka. US Secretary of State to visit the country this month. He will also discuss promising opportunities for US Sri Lanka cooperation based on shared commitments to a free and open Indo Pacific region. Different ladles. The opposition leader accuses Muslim politicians of duplicity. Rain hit ICC World Cup. Another Sri Lanka match rained off, but everyone's happy. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Tuesday, the 11th of June, 2019. From Ada Verana, this is Ada Verana First at Nine. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhamik Eknaika. Let's start with the local stories. Now, it was yet another eventful session at the Parliamentary Select Committee probing the Easter Sunday attacks. Former Governor of the Western Province, Asad Sali, testified before the committee today as he put the blame over the rise of National Tawhid Jamaat on the brother of Minister Abdul Halim. He also held the government responsible for the incidents of violence perpetrated against members of the Muslim community. The Parliamentary Select Committee inquiry into the Easter Sunday attacks convened its fourth session to record evidence today. Former Western Province Governor Azad Sali and President of All Ceylon Jamiatul Ulema, Mufti MIM Rizvi, gave their statements before the committee. Visekwenda Siddhiata Pasubimu Yam Karna Pidibandava, Adala Baladar in the Danundi Tibunu Bauta, Parta Tibuna. Muslim extremism Tienava, Tawijama, Dedas Dahate, Martu Palosvenida, Oka on record Yanava, Aizaran Vatanur Gandinagil. So Dedas Dataga, Dedas Daname, Hauru Degadi Sere, made Tiena documents of Dira Tiena, photos Dira Tiena, East Take, ISIS Kin Kodi Dagan Pelapaligia. Then Visekwenida may Paradima Unehatima. Eka Vende is Sir, Prabhu Runda Ava notice from the PSD. Mage PSU Argaila Mada Penna Bedu may Namtika Teka, Mange the Maya and Kiel and the Giasumana Tabi Ambunani. Then Metanadi Mameka Padil Sakiran Nuni, Hema Siri Fernando Lekam Tuma, Etumata, Mama Telephone Girl, Q Adima, Miss Sidia Kina, Vaham Ambin Nurgila, Etuma Tanya Mapi Ambune, Etuma Geno Kumla. Sumanaka is Sir, TID Director Tidia, AK India, Sisirimendis Matma. It is Sarakara Vartagra, Sophie Jagger. Oh. The Gadama Varta Garla photograph taker, Dilanta, who is the intelligence officer at that time, had a Mamadilati out of the Pagadis, may photograph. Eat at Wada, Dedas, Dahate, Zaran, Geval, Ekasi, Visa, Ginitino, Eastern Province, Katanguil. Eka Policy and Gila Kesimita Kirwin. A passe, Policy Rab of Pressure Regard, Minister Pare, Bella, Udgosh and Gurna, Zaran, Ereskarand Gila. Ethoda Ereskirwine, Mugut Kirwine, Ereskarand, last tuna, OIC, Vama Transkir, Policy, Tawijama, the Ekan Vedagan. කාත්තකුට <laughs> <laughs> Tawid Jamaat ke patang katte ekat. Ita pasu apu mudal vali. Meko lante beda gande beruwa. Kedi 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 kira. Tapi deng atak daya kelati. Eka tamai atta sidu bima. Meko lante pali eri gana. Hat dene ekat tan daya dene tamai ini. Minisu nae. Api evila eri tamai api Muslim ministry ekat kiu e. Ay meko legalize karanda dene. Ile dene. Jumma karanda bag ila niti ati ena mana. Ay Muslim department ke meko action katte nae. Muslim katte to amat dene sini family kara. Awat koi kara dek kare. Jana tawa digin digan mangi tamai andu apu dawasin dalam. Meite isra. Abi Wakuf Sabah, Muslim Department, Kiwe, 
අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම මේක නතර විය යුතුයි මේ ආණ්ඩුව පත් වෙච්ච දින 100 ආණ්ඩුවේ මෙතන ඉන්න සමහර මිනිස්සු දන්න මං අගමැතිතුමා හම්බෙලා කිව්වා හොඳ මුස්ලිම් කෙනෙක් කැමති කරන්න කියලා කිව්වා මෙයා නැතුව හොඳ මුස්ලිම් කෙනෙක් දාන්න කියන එක මං අගමැතිතුමාට ගිහිලා කිව්වා මට අගමැතිතුමා කිව්ව උත්තරේ තමයි දවස් 100කට මෙයාව දානවා අලුත් එකෙන් එනකොට මං අලුත් එකෙන් පත් කරන්න ගිය එයාගේ මල්ලි නිසා තමයි ඇමතුමාගේ මල්ලි නිසා තමයි මේ සම්පූර්ණ සිදීම සහ තවිද ජමාත මේ තත්වයට ඇති වුණේ කියන එක මම පැහැදි ලෙස කියනවා කවුද ඔබ ඇමතිවරයා කියන්නේ අලිම් ඇමතුමාගේ මල්ලි ෆයින් අයි අයියා ගැන අහිංසක මිනිහ අන්න ඒක තමයි මන්නේ නෑ ප්‍රශ්නේ මල්ලි කරුවාට අයියා වගේ කියන්න ඕනේ මේ දැනුත් වෙන්නේ මොකද මුස්ලිම් ජනතාව ත්‍රස්තවාදීන් කරනවා හැබැයි අද ජනතාව දුක් වෙන එක බැලුවාම අපිට දරා ගන්න බෑ මුස්ලිම් ජනතාව මේ වගේ තත්වයට ඔයගොල්ලන් පත් කරයි කියලා අපි කවුරු හිතුවේ නෑ අපි කියන්නේ කවුරු ආණ්ඩුව නෑ ආණ්ඩුව කියන්නේ ආණ්ඩුව ආණ්ඩුව වග කියනවා මෙතනදී ප්‍රශ්නයක් ඇති වුණා සුළු පිරිසක් 8 දිනේ කරපු වැඩේට මුළු මාත් ජනතාවටම මේ වගේ එකක් කරන එක හරියට වැරදි කියලා කියන්නේ අපි කිව්වේ තමයි නේද ඒක තමයි අපි කිව්වේ වෙන මොකද නෙවෙයි ඒකට අනිත් මිනිස්සුව තල්ලු කරන්න එපා එතනයි කියලා කියන්නේ වෙන මොකද නේද මේ කනවා කියලා දැන් මේකට මාව අතරු ගන්න එපා අතරු ගත්තේ 8 දිනේ කරාට 250ක් මරුණා නේ අනිවාර්යයෙන් අපිට තුවාල වුණා නේ රටේ ඇති වුණ භයානක තත්ත්වය දානකයි නේ 8 දින අකරා තෝලික පත් නැවතත් ත්‍රස්තවාදී තර්ජනයක් මේ රටේ තියෙනවා කියන්නේ කොහොමද තුමා හිතන්නේ මම කියන්නේ තවම තරියට ප්‍රශ්නේ ඇඩ්‍රස් කරලා නැහැ කියලා කියන්නේ මම හක් විකිටු අබ්දුල් රසික් එලියේ ඉන්න නිසා ත්‍රස්තවාදී තර්ජනය තාම තියෙනවා කියලා දී හිතන්නේ වෙන්න පුළුවන් හිතනවා විතරක් නෙවෙයි මේ ප්‍රශ්නේදී තවමත් අරියට කරන්න ඕන දේවල් කරලා නැහැ කියන Meanwhile president of the All Ceylon Jamiatul Ulama Mufti M I M Rizwe also appeared before the parliamentary select committee today The ACJU had made some statements that you had been warning the authorities yeah. uh, of possible extremist violence it was 2012 8 november the anti muslim hate campaign began on various media unfortunately the same campaign is still being carried out our letter a letter to defense 74 2014 regarding hated speech that letter was given to the defense secretary mr gotabi rajpaksh we are saying very unfortunately we have been witnessing very negative trend where some organization and individuals are making very one in effort to destabilize our motherland it is very clear it was done by bbs i was one of the first maybe in the world who spoke against isis this islam has nothing to do with isis my speech was on 6th 7 2014 where did you make the speech it was broadcast in slbc after the attack of aludgama so what is the relationship between aludgama oh. and uh, the isis what right. is the relationship how did you draw it but but the, the reason you draw? the reason after aludgama incident took place this is the one of the first reason where the isis thoughts entering to sri lanka where youngsters because of hate speech continuous from 2012 november 8 when this uh, the maharagama where kudubala sena collected everyone and the hate speech started and after that it came up to aludgama when aludgama incident took place we started watching few youngsters are uh, speaking about isis when i spoke in the radio this gentleman he was behind this i who is this gentleman who is this gentleman this adil ha huh? adil he came out with saying that i am a kafir i am nothing to do with islam what is a kafir that he is not a muslim in that does he say that you are a kafir because you criticized isis yeah, yeah. does he, he specifically say acj on rizwi yeah mr rizwi he didn't mention me as a molavi or mufti yeah they announce that islamic caliphate oh i see right because their teacher qardawi did so wallahi their treasury is very clear oh muslims of sri lanka time for you to decide you see the person who worked in it company in colombo yeah yeah he is he, he was arrested he arrested recently oh. after the 21st of april yeah yeah right from 2012 onward we were having some communication with the uh, defense authorities because of this hate speech and the bbs involvement all this has started where we showed this kind of things is happening in the social media please take care of it the which year was this this 2014 onwards i want to this radical uh, attempt is that something which is accepted or condoned in the quran no 
it's not, it's, it's prohibited. A hundred percent. You kill a person, you are kin to killing the entire world. Zahran and all this group, nothing to do with Islam. We have already said in 2015. Now, the weekly cabinet meeting was not called today, giving rise to speculation over its cause. The matter is given an extra edge since it failed to convene, especially after President Maitripala Sirisena is said to be displeased over the Parliament Select Committee probing the Easter attacks. The head of state had allegedly threatened to not convene the cabinet of the, if the PSC proceedings continued. While some politicians feared the entire governing mechanism coming to a standstill, others were of the view that the PSC proceedings targeted the head of state. The weekly cabinet meeting did not take place today. This comes at a time where the president had expressed his displeasure over the parliamentary select committee probing the Easter Sunday attacks. The president called for an emergency cabinet meeting last Friday night where he said that he will not hold cabinet meetings any further if the parliamentary select committee continues its proceedings. The president said to disband the parliamentary select committee, otherwise he will not hold cabinet meetings. Today we did not have a meeting, but the inquiries are being held. If this situation continues, the president will prorogue parliament and everything will come to a standstill, including the parliamentary select committee. The cabinet did not convene today. Another crisis that has arisen is the difference of opinion between the parliament and the president. This select committee was mooted by the UNP and the joint opposition. The question that we have, however, is who is really being targeted by forming this committee proposed by the UNP and the joint opposition. We must also highlight the fact that the chief of state intelligence service not being in the country. He was in Singapore. He left Sri Lanka on the 13th and returned on the 16th. Therefore, I wish to ask, as the head of intelligence, what did he do when he received important information warning of a pending attack? Why did he leave the country during such a time? Even though these things have happened, the issue has been put on the president claiming his lack of knowledge. We see this as a committee that is collecting information targeting the president to destroy him. The select committee can now show the public who is really responsible and who is at fault. This is important. At a time where certain officials have said that they will not send their officers to the parliamentary select committee, the speaker made it clear that everyone is answerable to the public. Therefore, if the select committee summons an official to testify, they should comply. Our international affairs expert Dr. Stanley Johnny warns that although the core of the ISIS caliphate is decimated in Syria and Iraq, its periphery is very much intact. Addressing the International Symposium on the Global Expansion of ISIS Impact on Sri Lanka at the Mahindra Rajpaksha Centre for International Relations recently, he said that South Asia plays a major role in this periphery through which the militant organisation seeks to regain its power across the globe. Dr. Johnny is of the view that this very reason was in fact the cause for the ISIS to choose Sri Lanka for the recent Easter Sunday attacks. Meanwhile, the former head of military intelligence of the Maldives highlighted that Islamic extremist groups are supportive of each other across the globe and called for governments to take countermeasures to address it. 2011, the Tawhid and Shirk has, thing has uh, started. And 2012, there's another thing which has started, especially focusing Syria. So that is called Sharia for Maldives. During this period, we have seen that a lot of forums were organized, a lot of exhibitions in, by this name, Sharia for Islam. Later it developed, 2014 was the time that the uh, new form of Al-Qaeda, the IS, started by that name. But Al-Qaeda was main component uh, behind what has been going on. The continuity of this is still there. Uh, we have to work hard and um, uh, the grow in Maoist with extremist combination would be something which you also need to focus more and do a little more further study on this. And uh, the return is from war zone, which is going to be another challenge. And rehabilitation programs are going to be the most uh, challenging things for Similar incidents and patterns are seen through the period uh, in both countries and also it is going parallel and for the same course. Islamist groups globally supportive to each other. So we have to keep in this mind and I'm quite definite that uh, if we can work together as, as a collective teams within the region and it will be very much effective and um, uh, these things we can uh, get away from the community for the better mankind.
to understand why Sri Lanka was targeted, uh, what we have to do, I think, is to look at the operational strategy of the Islamic State. Because the Islamic State, uh, it is not just the organization that was founded in Iraq and Syria. The organization that was established in Iraq and Syria is the core. Caliphate also has a periphery. The periphery is the regions that lie outside the core. It is from the periphery where the Islamic State found its recruits. From Kerala, my home state in India, uh, in 2016, two dozen people went missing, including women, uh, one as a pregnant woman and children. Kerala is, in terms of social indicators, when it comes to uh, education, when it comes to other human development index, Kerala is one of the number one states in, in, in uh, India. So our conventional wisdom is that wealth, education, and all these things prevent people from being radicalized, which is a myth, I think. And it was proved that it is a myth in the case of the Islamic State, because in Kerala, all those people who went missing, they were later confirmed that they traveled to Afghanistan and Syria to join the Islamic State. Most of them are coming from upper middle class families, like in the case of the Sri Lankan bombers. One of them is coming from one of the wealthiest families in the country. It's against the conventional wisdom. The problem is not poverty. The problem is not lack of information, lack of education. The problem is that there is an ideological zeal with the Islamic State. And Islamic State finds people in the periphery, such people, young people in the periphery, to draw them into the caliphate. Because Caliph Baghdadi's message is that after 100 years of injustice, I have established the caliphate. You don't have to believe in nation states. You don't have to be an Indian. You don't have to be a Sri Lankan. You have to be a follower of Caliph Abu Bakr Baghdadi. This ideology is very powerful and that is what drawing in people. When you look at the periphery of the Islamic State, South Asia is an important region, uh, mainly because of two reasons. One is, of course, the Muslim population. The South Asia has a huge chunk of Muslim population. So ISIS sees them as potential target. And then secondly, there are conflicts in, in several countries in South Asia, like for example in the case of Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the most conflict devastated country. And unsurprisingly, it is in Afghanistan where the ISIS could establish an organizational presence in South Asia, in none of the other countries. Other countries, what they do is, a similar thing, what happened, to, what happened in Sri Lanka, a similar thing happened in Pakistan, though, the, though it's, it differs in scale. In 2016, a splinter group of the Pakistani Taliban uh, had declared allegiance to the Islamic State and then they carried out a bomb attack on the 2006 Easter day uh, in, La in a Lahore park, killing dozens of people. It happened on an Easter day. They tried to draw in young people. Th that is one thing. Secondly, they co-opt extremist organizations in these countries into their stream. That's what happened in Pakistan, and I think that's what they did in, uh, in Sri Lanka also, because NTJ finally became an ISIS offshoot. In, in places where they can't build organization, like they did in Afghanistan, they do the other channels. We have to understand both the core and the periphery of the Islamic State. The core is now decimated. ISIS has succeeded in what even Al-Qaeda couldn't do. Al-Qaeda you know, was a hit-and-run organization, so ISIS has globalized its ideology. So that is the real problem, the real threat that ISIS is posing. And in the periphery, ISIS ideology will continue to work. And you have to fight that not only through oh, the muscle. Muscle is important, but by other means as well. Now, moving on with other stories, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is scheduled to arrive in Sri Lanka following his visit to India this month. Speaking to journalists, spokeswoman of the U.S. State Department Morgan Ortega has confirmed that the top U.S. diplomat could leave for Delhi on the 24th of June. She announced that Secretary Pompeo will visit the Indo-Pacific until the 30th of this month to broaden and deepen U.S. partnerships with key countries to advance their shared goal on a free and open Indo-Pacific. I'm pleased to announce that Secretary Pompeo will travel to the Indo-Pacific region on June 24th through the 30th to broaden and deepen our partnership with key countries to advance our shared goal of a free and open Indo-Pacific. The Secretary's first stop will be in New Delhi, India. The Secretary's next stop will be in Colombo, Sri Lanka, where Secretary Pompeo will express America's solidarity with the people of Sri Lanka as they stand united against the despicable Easter Sunday terrorist attacks. He will also discuss promising opportunities for U.S.-Sri Lanka cooperation based on shared commitments to a free and open Indo-Pacific region. 
Now, President's Council Ali Sabri believes that the existing laws are more than sufficient to crack down on racial and religious hate. He, however, pointed to a dubious practice of hand-picking individuals to be brought to book as the stumbling block in the efforts to eradicate extremism. Speaking at an event in Colombo last evening, the President's Council, however, conceded that a specific cyber security law is a must. If we take a look at Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew said that they cannot develop this country if there is ethnic conflict. He took stern measures against hate speech and enforced the law. We have adequate legal mechanisms in Sri Lanka. For example, if we take a look at the penal code under section 291A, it states that any manner of deliberate religious hurt inflicted on another is punishable. Even though we have this law, just browse through Facebook and you will find content that spread extremism, racism and hate. Is it the problem with the law or enactment of the law? It is only enacted on hand-picked individuals and that is the issue. I do not know if we need any more laws, but we do need a cyber security law for monitoring social media. Obtaining a TV license back in the day was a big deal. Radio Ceylon was the only radio channel that had a radio license they were made accountable but now anyone who has a smartphone is a broadcaster if there is a negative post it is shared on various platforms like whatsapp groups and messenger with it gathering pace how can you save a country like this the group of Muslim parliamentarians who recently resigned from their ministerial positions called on the chief incumbent of the Askire chapter, Most Venerable Varaka Goda Shri Nyanaratanatera and clergy from the Malwata chapter in Kandy. Speaking to the group of parliamentarians, Registrar of the Askire chapter, Venerable Madagama Dhammanandatera expressed his dismay over the manner in which investigations are being conducted into the Easter Sunday attacks. Muslim parliamentarians who resigned from their ministerial positions earlier this month met with the chief incumbent of the Askiria chapter, Most Venerable Varakagura Srinyana Ratanathera, and the Anunayakas of the Malvatu chapter at the Askiri Mahavihara recently. <laughs> Speaking to the clergy, parliamentarian Rauf Hakim said that their decision to collectively resign should be seen as a symbolic move in order to prevent further issues taking place in the country. In response, Anunayaka of the Askri chapter, when Balanamadu Dhammadas Sitera, said that their decision to step down from their positions was interpreted to the country as though it was done to show up solidarity with a certain group. I have spoken to MP Rishad Badidin personally. I have spoken to the President and people who are in your position on numerous occasions and advised them that if there are any allegations to hold necessary investigations and resolve the issue. We would not be in such a critical position if this happened. We are not happy in the way that investigations are being conducted. We are unhappy how intelligence officers are being revealed in Parliament and how they are trying to find who is to be held accountable. <laughs> Moving on with other local stories, opposition leader Mahindra Rajpaksha alleges that certain Muslim politicians are spreading racism through utterances made in Tamil, all the while they speak of reconciliation in Sinhalese. The opposition leader made his views clear while delivering a special statement dubbed the political aftershock of Easter Sunday attacks. There is mistrust between the Muslim community and other factions. This trust issue is on the way to being exacerbated since there are allegations of a Muslim doctor at Kurnagala Hospital sterilizing non-Muslim women. All leaders should work with responsibility at a time like this. We all should understand that all this is happening at present is linked to the looming presidential election. All Muslim ministers are resigning when only one is accused is not the parliamentary tradition. There is an allegation that Muslim Muslim politicians are speaking of reconciliation in Sinhalese and spreading racism in Tamil. It is also evident that the UNP is attempting to secure the votes of the Muslim community with these politicians. Now no one talks about the bond scam, the economic crisis or the injured still lying in hospitals from the Easter Sunday attacks. Even the search operations have stopped. They're exploiting the Muslim community for their political gain. UNP require the votes of extremist Muslims as well as others. People of this country will not tolerate terrorism and we must defeat it. If the extremism sprouting within the Muslim community is to be addressed, they have to be arrested along with their businesses and houses searched. I declare before the public that terrorism will have no place under a government led by myself. <laughs> Janata Vidri is still a Vashim Prakash Karno. 
A group, including Venerable Aturali Rathanathera today, was to engage in an inspection tour of the Batiklo campus. Security was beefed up in the vicinity of the campus that saw the presence of the army, the police and the police special task force. The Thera, however, was not permitted entrance to the university by the security officials at the premises. A tense situation erupted at the location when former Eastern Provincial Councillor Priyanta Patiran attempted to forcibly enter the university. 45 minutes later, however, Venerable Aturali Ratanathera was granted permission to enter the university premises, but the media was not granted access. There is more news coming up on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now to bring you a market update. Shares ended firmer for the third straight session today to hit a near one-month closing high on local buying even as foreign investors continue to pull out funds from equities. The all share price index ended 0.23% firmer at 5,335.29. We now have Achyudin Sri Rangan from First Capital Holdings with a report on market performance. The secondary bond market witnessed a buying interest pushing the yield curve downward, although the overall market witnessed a thin volume, with the limited activities ahead the bill and bond auction. The stock market continued to witness the positive sentiment for the third stage session, recording a four-week cycle index mainly contributed by the commercial bank and RC hospital holding. While turnover for the day record for a two weeks high, mainly dominated by the crossing made on Central Finance and Expo Lanka, recording a 53% of the turnover for the day. After this short break, we'll be taking a look at what's happening overseas. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now at least five people have been killed and thousands more have been left stranded after record rainfall hit southern China. Hundreds of homes and thousands of hectares of crops have been destroyed by the downpour, which are expected to continue for several days. State media say that more than two million people have been affected and roads and bridges have been badly damaged. In Guizhou province, an entire town was submerged under two metres of water. Elsewhere, China's Meteorological Association said rainfall in the southern provinces of Jiangxi and Hunan had hit record highs for June. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.